Hello and welcome to Dr. Harold Crumfield here on the campus of Lexington High School. We're way up north where the United States Revolutionary War started so many years ago and today it's the start of another war. The Procton Boxers 2017 campaign as they face the Minutemen of Lexington. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. I'm going to be joined alongside the award-winning director and producer Nubi Ratto to bring you all the action, and it's going to be a great one here. The starting quarterback for the boxers, Jose Montero Jr., winning the job after a couple of seasons of tough injuries. He's back for his senior campaign, looking to lead the boxers on a deep postseason run. It's the Minutemen and the boxers going at it. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, football fans of all ages, this is it. The moment that fans around the world have been waiting for. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside the seven-time award-winning director and producer and Emmy-nominated Newbie Ratto. Newbie, we're up north of Boston. We're where the Revolutionary War started, and football and wars have one thing in common. It's a battle of the trenches, Newbie. Brockton has a very good offensive, defensive line. Talk about the importance of the trenches. I'm fired up. You're fired up. Lexington's fired up. Brockton's fired up. BCA's fired up. NBC's fired up. The Yugoslavia system's fired up. Guys, it's going to be a fantastic, fantastic game. You know, I think um, Brockton come out here. It's the first game of the regular season. You know, it's very important. You mentioned they have a lot of new players, but I think they have a lot of veteran leadership as well. It's going to be interesting to see how quickly the offense meshes, how quickly the defense meshes. And typically in football, the defense seems to start off on a quicker pace than the offense. So look for the defense to get off to a quicker start. It might take a little while for the offense to kind of get the kinks out and kind of go from there. Newbie, the last time these two teams met, 1984 Division I Super Bowl. We don't know a lot about Lexington. Lexington doesn't know a lot about us. Talk about what that's like going into the first game of the season. Well, first and foremost, you know, when you talk about the first game of the season, number one, you have to get the kinks out. That's, that's number one. Number two, when you're facing a team that, you know, you don't know much about. Like I said before, you know, Bill Belichick has a thing, and it's called do your job. Okay, if you just execute your offense and execute what you have to do, okay, you don't really have to worry so much what the opponent's going to do. So I really think, honestly, it's easier to get the defense on board. Hey, Joe! Then, you know, it's easier to get the defense on board than getting the offense on board, especially if you don't know your opposition. So look for them to get to a quick start. But the offense, it might take a while for both offenses to kind of get, you know, to kind of get a, a feeling going of, of, of where they're going. It's kind of like a boxing match. You know, the first couple of rounds, you're kind of jabbing and feeling each other out. And then when you get an idea of what's going on, that's, you know, when the actual boxing match starts. It's going to be kind of like this. I expect a slow start offensive will probably pick up in the second quarter or so. Brockton has won the toss, deferred to the second half, so Lexington will receive the opening kick once the action begins, or right now, actually. Lexington wearing their home blue jerseys, white pants, new, brand new Under Armour jerseys, looking fresh. Brockton, on the other hand, white jerseys, maroon pants, black and white striped down the side, maroon helmet with the boxer decal on the side. And now for the national anthem, and then the 2017 season kicks off. If we could all please rise. We can remove our hats and helmets. Hey, Sam, get a shot of the crowd. For the national anthem today, Lexington wants to honor a member of our family. Lexington football lost a member of behind the scenes, one of our technical staff members of the local Lex Media who's been doing these games for over 20 years for Lexington. 
As you may not know, Fred Rothbell, but Fred has been setting up all the media for 20 years, breaking it down after the games. And in the off season, we lost Fred to cancer. So at this time, we're going to have Sal Kulik, the captain, is going to present the board members, Jim Shaw, and Mr. Santos, the signed game ball. This ball is to be presented to be put in the Lex Media office in memory of Fred and his dedication. So please honor me in a moment of silence for Fred. High School Junior, Warren Hobbs, from the acapella singer from the Queens Behind Jelly Group, is on hand to perform our national anthem. Rousing National Anthem, newbie, and we are about to kick off the 2017 season. A highly anticipated season for the Brockton Boxers. Today we, we see the return of starting quarterback Jose Montero Jr., who is coming off a torn ACL. He's missed all of last season and about half of the season before that. This is his senior year. Wants to perform, and he's wearing a brace on his left leg. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, a great story coming back. I know last year, uh, Matt DeCreese was stepped in, and actually he injured himself as well last year. So, the, you know, tough year in terms of injuries for the boxers. But um, you know, let, let's see how they come out. Yeah, I, I think they're gonna, you know, f throw the football a lot more this year than they have in previous years. I think the game has changed. To be quite frank with you, I think it's more of a passing game. And I think that's going to trickle down to high school sports eventually if it's not high as already. So look for more passing this year by the Brockton Boxers. And obviously we'll have a traditional power running football game. But I'm uh, very excited to see what kind of team this has. And I look forward for a, a stifling, stifling defense as a lot of young players coming up from the JV and freshman team that are making their start here in varsity. Max Tobo kicking off for the Boxers, a short return. And the Minutemen will get their start at about the 20-yard line. And we're going to see the defense of the Brockton Boxers that's missing a key piece from last year. Kingsley Ijoku DK has moved on to play at Brown University, a senior captain. Talk about the loss of Kingsley and how the Boxers can expect to fill that hole. Well, just in terms of leadership. I mean, never alone the talent of Kingsley, but the leadership of him. Uh, on the field, you know, and, and going there. So kudos to him actually just going to Brown Ivy League School. Fantastic job. Also, Matt Crusoe went to Bryant. Um, but, you know, kudos to him in terms of leadership. But, hey, you know, this is what happens. You know, someone else needs to step up and go forward and, and, and take on the reins. High formation for the Minutemen. It's going to be a flea flicker. And now looking deep, and he's going to get taken down in the backfield. Number nine, the quarterback, Sal Freilich, the senior quarterback. Tell you what, got a little too cute on that play, and the Brockton Box with that foot on that at all. 
like I said before, the last couple of years, you know, Broughton has had a strong JV team, and strong freshman team, so these players are coming up through the ranks, and, uh, you know, they're now juniors and seniors, so we're going to see the fruits of their labor. Three receivers set. Pass complete to number seven on the near side, and he is taken out of bounds. That is Anthony Bianchi, the junior slot receiver, on the reception. Fantastic bounce back, bounce back play right there. Good job moving around the pocket, finding the open man. Quick pace offense, and they're going to catch Brockton offsides on this play. Free play, and a deep pass is going to be... Broken up by the boxers defense, number 88, the intended receiver, Riley Walsh. Smart play right there by the quarterback. Free play, you know, has an opportunity. You know, let's try to take a chance downfield. Let's go deep. Didn't complete that, but uh, good presence of mind, good awareness by, by, uh, by Lexington. It'll be not to be lost in all of the festivities pregame. We're on a natural grass surface here in Lexington, something the boxers have not played on in quite some time. Well, to be quite frank with you, I think it's kind of cool. I mean, you know, th this is where football is originally played on grass. I think it gives a little more give to the knees. Um, you know, does it look as pretty as the field turf? Probably not, to be quite frank with you. But this is football. Uh, th this is this is what this is football grass. This, this is what they play on. This is what the big boys play on. Four receivers split to each side, and Freilich is going to be taken down in the backfield once again. I know that typically now most NFL stadiums, you know, they have the, the field turf that we have in Marcion Stadium, so many other high schools, but uh, this is the original grass that you guys play on, the, on your playgrounds. And, and, you know, back when Foxborough Stadium was kicking before Gillette Stadium, you know, this is what, you know, this is what most players played on. Four receivers set for the Minutemen, split to each side. Freilich rolling out to his left. Quick pass. Yeah, they say it's complete. going to be incomplete is the official call. So that will bring up a third and 10 for the Minutemen. I'll tell you what, I like the way this quarterback moves around the pocket, though. I mean, great pocket presence. Doesn't get too razzled. Third and 10 is probably going to be a throwing down right here. It'll be the size of the Brockton line is showing number 54 right in the middle. Doing excellent work to break up any passing. And this one's gonna be complete and a big hit. The pass caught by Anthony Bianchi. It's gonna be close to a first down and it's gonna be a generous spot. First down for the Minutemen. Yeah, that, that's a big hit, but even a bigger catch right there. Got it real quickly and they're doing a, uh, no huddle offense right here. Brock has gotta be on their toes. Quarterback keeper, Freilich rolling out to his left. He's got a gain of about six yards on the play. Second and four for Lexington. I'll tell you what, this kid's presence of mind. Presence of mind, that's what I think of this quarterback the last few offensive players. Just has a great feel for the game. And uh, he's, he's, gonna be a, he's gonna be a tough little cookie for the Brought to Box in this game. Lexington starting off slowly, but the no huddle offense. Starting to fire on all cylinders. Freilich this time keeps it himself, rolling out to the near side. Has a first down and a little bit more as he is pushed out of bounds by number 88 for the boxers on the stop. And that would be Isaiah Laguerre. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, Matt. The offensive line right now is manhandling the Brockton defensive line. And that shouldn't happen. They got to push through and fight, and fight through. And, and, and really, you know, they had an opportunity to really tackle this quarterback in the backfield and just getting out. Uh, hustling right now, and you know, you got to fight through these, these uh, this offense lineman right now. Freilich in the shotgun, four receivers set. This there you handoff go. and able to break the tackle, number 28, and he's headed for the first down marker. And more still on his feet to the far side before he's taken down by a few Brockton boxers. I'll tell you what, you got to fight through these uh, through these offense linemen. Two missed tackles right there, had the opportunity to have the quarterback lose about two or three yards. Next thing you know, now it's a, uh, I'm sorry, just got almost attacked by B over here. <laughs> ben Quint on the carry oh, for the Minutemen. Men. He flanks Freilich to his right. Four receivers both split to each side. Excuse me as I kill this B. And that's the end of that. Freilich pitches out to Quint. Quint. Able to find a hole and he escapes four Brockton boxers as he cuts up field and he's close to another first down for the Minutemen. Oh, what a cutback right there. He went whoop, then whoop, then whoop, then whoop. 
Then what did he do? Yeah, he went whoop! And then after that, he went whoop! What a cutback. First and ten for the Minutemen. Freilich in the shotgun. Quint to his left. Two receivers to each side. It's going to be a quick pass complete. And a gain of about eight for Anthony Bianchi, the junior slot receiver. Yeah, what's really frosting about cookies, uh, Matt, is that you know, Brockton is having opportunities to make plays. They're not making plays. You know, I, I can see one thing where, you know, Lex and the offensive line just fly out better than the defensive line. I don't think that's the case. I think they're just being out-hustled, out-manhandled, and they're just missing a lot of crucial tackles. Second and about two for the Minutemen. Freilich is going to pass, and that's complete to Bianchi for a Minuteman touchdown. That's good football. That's good football right there. Old school running right down their throats. Good offensive play, offensive possession by Lexington. For Brockton, where did that drive go wrong? We started out with a sack, a few incomplete passes. It was looking good back in Lexington territory, and all of a sudden, 80 yards later, Lexington's up 6 to nothing. Well, you have to credit that to two missed tackles by the Brockton box. I gave a big first down line to get close to the red zone. And then, you know, it was a, th it was a third and 10. You know, had an opportunity to stop them on a third down multiple times and just couldn't, couldn't get off the field. The extra point attempt is good. Seven to nothing, Lexington over Brockton. 7.40 left to go in the first quarter. Gonna give a shout out to the Lex Media crew. You're probably hearing our voices up in Lexington right now. So what fantastic. Little, little bit of simulcast action going on. Fantastic, had a chance to, uh, to meet a few of them. Just, you know, dynamite. Dynamite crew, so it's kudos to you guys. Back to receive the kickoff is number 24, the senior captain wide receiver, Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. And I, I did hear um, Lexington Media did have a loss this summer, so a heartfelt condolences to, uh, to Lex Media and, and to, their, to their family and friends. Shout out to Lexington High for realizing that and community access plays a big part in high school sports and presenting Lex Media with the game ball signed by the members of the Lexington Minuteman football team. And I'd be remiss if I didn't um, say, you know, obviously Monday is 9-11. Uh, just, you know, kudos to our first responders. And the onside kick, onside kick out of nowhere. Number 19 fields it and diving out of the way. Excellent awareness there by number 19, Aaron White. That was a half-hearted effort on onside kick right there. And Brockton's just in prime field position at midfield. Ball placed right at the 50-yard line. And we're going to have the first look of the day at Jose Montero Jr., starting quarterback for the Brockton Boxers. The last time we saw him, it was at Durfee High School in the last game of the regular season two years ago. Rearing to get back at it. You can see the brace on his left leg coming off a torn ACL. Three receiver set. Montero Jr. back to pass. It is complete to Cundiff who turns the corner to the 40, the 35, the 30 before he is taken out, out of bounds. A first down play for number 24. The senior wide receiver, Jalen Cundiff. That's what we call yak, yards after catch right there. A lot of green, a lot of space. Good job uh, shifting to another gear and picking up a huge chunk of yardage. Split receivers. This handoff goes to number 16, who is taken down at the line of scrimmage. That is Rosen Pierre. Sean Sullivan on the tackle for Lexington. Brockton trying to mimic the no huddle offense. Four receivers split. Montero back to pass. That is going to be complete. And cutting back inside, getting a few more of those very important yak. Yeah, it looks like he might have a it might be just short of the first down. Very close to the first down, depending on the spot. It's going to be third 
and a short one. Running press so far with Montel. Running right, throwing right. Two for two so far. Montero under center, Rosen Pierre behind him, and a quarterback keeper, and a first down and then some for Jose Montero Jr. So far, looks sharp. Not a big person, so definitely uh, kind of a, a, a wiry built, but has the speed, and uh, definitely can tell he's tough. Montero Jr. in some trouble, and he's going to be sacked for a loss of about five. Got caught up in the backfield right there. Didn't get fooled by the play action. And loses eight yards on that one. Looks like it's a timeout caught on Time I called by Coach Colombo. Like I said before, um, Monday is September 11th, uh, anniversary of one of the worst attacks in our country's history. So just want to give a shout out to our first responders, EMT, police officers, firefighters, etc. We appreciate what you guys do. A lot of police officers here on detail. Just uh, they don't get thanks enough. So it's, it's a heartfelt thank you. For what you guys do. Along those same lines, not only 9-11, but we're dealing with the after effects of Hurricane Harvey, That's Hurricane right. Irma on its way, Hurricane Jose right on its tails. Right, right. First responders having a very, very tough time in the last few weeks and going forward as we get deeper into September. Right. Actually, after this, I'm actually going to a uh, benefit concert that Mayor Marty Walsh is doing over at City Hall Plaza to benefit Hurricane Harvey. Montero receives the snap in the shotgun, throwing deep to the far side. It's going to be overthrown. Cundiff, the intended receiver. Yeah, tough play right there. Um, yeah, I didn't really see much of an opening. And I'm not sure if he intentionally threw out of bounds. That might have been best decision because there was no opening right there. Good job by the secondary of Lexington. Third and 15 for the boxers. Nice day. I thought it was going to rain. A few raindrops came down, but it looks like the rain subsided. Just Good a day few. football. Just a few. Got packed house here. Very, very big crowd here at Lexington High School. Four receivers set for the boxers, and Brockton. We have a, a false start, looks like. It's going to be a false start against the boxers. Again, that, you know, I'm not surprised, Matt. I mean, that's just, again, first game of the season. You know, you, you try to get the kinks out. You know, trying to get the rust out. So we might see a few, a few false starts by both teams in this game, particularly in the first quarter. 5.45 left in the first quarter. 7-0 Lexington on top of Brockton. Montero Jr. deep pass to the right. He's looking for number 15. That pass is going to be incomplete. Tejan Darty, uh, Glenn Darty, the intended receiver, also a starting member of the Brockton Boxers basketball team. i tell you what, I mean, he has an arm right there. Nice little fade route, throws on the right side of the shoulder. Uh, you know, pretty accurate, just, you know, you know, the receiver zigged and the quarterback zagged, but, uh, you know, good looking arm. Fourth and about 20 for the boxers. Brockton gonna go for it. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Pierre flanking Montero. Montero in trouble, and he's gonna be taken down. And he looks to be in a little bit of pain as he was taken down at the 36-yard line. And that's where Lexington's going to take over with a turnover on downs. I'll tell you what, um, great job by this D-line right here applying pressure. They brought the heat on that fourth down, and uh, Montero couldn't handle the heat, and, and, and it was taken down. To be honest, you know, it is difficult. And listen, I have never had a torn ACL, but from what I hear from athletes, you know, 
that first year, I mean, it, it's a more of a mental thing, you know, to, to actually trust that your knee is there. So, you know, it's his first game back, first regular uh, season game. So, you know, it, it might take a little while to get used to that knee. Freilich looking very good on the first drive, and he picks up right where he left off with a gain of 12 and a first down for the Minutemen. Newby, we mentioned it in the pregame. This game will be one of the trenches, and Lexington is dominating that battle right now. I'll tell you what, the offensive line is just doing a dynamic job. I'm going to be frank with you guys. I think Brockton, if this quarterback continues to run around like this, they got to put a spy on him because he is just running rough shot right now. Freilich in the shotgun. Two receivers split to each side. Freilich, quick pass to number 88, who is taken down after a gain of about three on the reception was Riley Walsh, the junior wide receiver. I just think Brockton needs to get tough on the line of scrimmage. I mean, they're just being made up. They just give them too much respect on that line of scrimmage. It's got to be more physical. Brockton only going with three linemen here. And Freilich in the shotgun receiving some direction from the head coach, George Peterson. Now Freilich pitches out and Running rough shot on the Brockton boxers is number 28. Who finds the end zone for another Lexington touchdown? That was Ben Quint, the senior running back, running all the way to the house. Good night, Irene. I mean, wow. He saw a hole. He just accelerated to a whole nother stratosphere. They just look faster. They look tougher right now. Touchdown puts the Minutemen up 13 to nothing with 440 left in the first quarter. Now, how big were those missed tackles that first offensive possession right there? Now, being down by two scores. I mean, things like that could turn around a game just like that. Duncan Hewitt to attempt the extra point. Good on his first attempt. Flags thrown, and this one will be good as well. Awaiting the flag, of course. This is a false start. It's going to be offsides against Brockton. Penalty decline, the extra point good. 14 to nothing, the Lexington Minutemen over the Brockton Boxers. Out of nowhere. This is fun. This is fun. We're going to find out what type of team the Brockton Boxers are early on. This is cool. Down by 14, 440 left. You're, you're down by two touchdowns. How tough are you? Let's find out right now. This is good. This is a good thing. It's a good mental test. I'm excited. Let's go. So, Newby, let's talk about the Brockton Boxers' upcoming schedule. Of course, the way the MIAA playoff format shakes out. Every year we have either seven home games or three home games. This year is a three home game year. Those three games coming against Durfee, Weymouth, and Catholic Memorial. We travel to face Severian. And BC High, that game is going to be at Harvard at Alumni Stadium. That's going to be a cool game. Very excited for that one. Is that a Friday night? That's a Friday night. Friday night at Harvard Stadium. That's going to be very cool. But Brockton having two straight home games, and then they're on the road pretty much the rest of the season until the last week against Durfee. As Cundiff receives this one at his own five-yard line, cutting out to the far side towards the boxer sideline. He shakes loose. Cuts back upfield, finds a little bit of a hole before the crowd comes up, and he is pushed forward to about the 26-yard line. And can I just for, say for the record, I think the MIAA regular season format stinks. I, I mean, it really is bad. I mean, the, the, the way they have this going, seven games, I can't stand it. But, um, hey, it is what it is. Every team has to go through it. So, you know, you just got to play through it. But, um, hey, Brockton's always – they have a tough schedule, which I like. You know, they play the Catholic Conference. Um, and like you said before, they're playing uh, CM and, and BCI. It's going to be a tough schedule, but I think they brought the box up for the, for the matchup this year. I think they have a lot of talent, and we just got to show it. 4.26 left to go. The viewers of Brockton are very familiar with my opinions on the MIAA playoff format. As now breaking loose is Rosen. He's got a gain of about 12 and a first down for the boxers. Bullies his way through. Yeah, probably won't. 
Great running play right there. Great move by uh, great job by the running back following his blockers. Right discipline. Another big hole right there. Picks up four yards. Matt Stevens on the tackle for the Minutemen. Second and a long six. Call it six and a half for the boxers who are going to huddle up for what seems like the first time this game. And Matt, I just want to give you a compliment. I'm very impressed with uh, the last two years. The Brock Community Access I thought has really upped their game in terms of sports coverage and collaboration with, with Lex Media. Uh, so I just want to give you guys a shout out. I know I've been, uh, been out of the loop for a while, you know, been fortunate to do a lot of work with, with Lynn TV and, so, and et cetera, but just want to give BCA and, and you a shout out, just uh, stepping up your game. I appreciate it. Flags are thrown and that work would not be complete without the one, the only, Mike the Postman oh, Simmons. The Postman always delivers. Why is he the Postman? He always, he always delivers. delivers. And twice on Sundays. And twice. The guy is just an absolute FedEx machine. He's going to put UPS out of business. He's going to put it all. They're already out of business because of him. I mean, they're, they're hanging on right now. Second and 11 for the boxers. Montero Jr. in the shotgun. The handoff to Cundiff as he goes wide to the far side and taken down after a gain of about four yards. It'll be a third and a long seven for the boxers. Got a little too cute that football. Got to hold on to that football. You know, it was out. Could have been easily a, a play where a defender could have punched it out for a fumble. Three minutes left in the first quarter. It's going to be third and seven for Brockton. A throwing situation for Jose Montero Jr. And that's reflected in the personnel group. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Montero Jr. in the shotgun. Back to pass. Looking long, looking deep. He's got Cundiff, and it's off his fingertips. Newbie credit. Newbie credit. I saw it. I'm not sure if everyone saw it. He checked down with the pump fake. Fooled the defensive back, then threw it deep. You don't see that in high school football. That, that's a college move right there. Newbie credit right there. Incomplete pass. All that toast, no jelly. Could have, Should have completed it. Could have, would have, should have, but uh, fantastic job getting the defender to bite and then have an opportunity for a long, uh, long completion. But all that should have caught the football, and it's going to be a punt. Brockton is in a punting formation. If you're Cundiff, you got to catch that ball. Got to catch it. Got to catch, catch it. it. And if he caught that, there was no one in front of him. They got seven points on the board for Brockton if Cundiff catches that ball. I'll tell you what, I think of Cundiff, I think of uh, the Baltimore Bill, Ravens. Billy Cundiff, yeah. Baltimore Ravens and, and, and Wyatt Now on the Cleveland Browns. Now on the Browns. Speaking of the Patriots, ouch. Wow. I'd rather get the loss out of the way early. Yeah, sure. I'd rather them lose week one than week 16. I agree. But when you have the Patriots defense and Tom Brady and your fantasy team, Whoa. What, what defense? Yeah, the what defense? Yeah, exactly. It was a tough week for me. <laughs> and Danny Amendola in the Pats defense going, it was not pretty. It was, week one it, matchup. It, it, was, it wasn't ugly. It was ugly. Good kick spiraling. And number 28 lost it in the sun. Lost and this one's going to take a big Brockton bounce. Touchdown at the seven-yard line for a net punt of about 60 yards. Yeah, that's just, huge, you know, huge. That's a tough break right there. It's almost the only you can do about you lost in the sun. I mean, but uh, yeah, tough break right there. Good break for Brockton. Just, just couldn't see it. Not much you can do about that. We take this break in the action to remind you, Brockton Community Access is on Twitter. We are at the Brockton Channel. We are live tweeting this game, or attempting to anyway. <laughs> Scoring updates. If you want to talk to us, hashtag BCA Sports. Nice. The semi official hashtag. Freilich, who has run all over the Brockton boxers today in the shotgun, he hands off to Quint, who is taken down by what seems like the entire defensive line. 
big stop right here. If they brought the boss to get a stop right here, they'll be in pretty good field position when they get the ball back. So if they can get three and out, you know, get some momentum here. Still the first quarter so early, it'd, it'd be huge for uh, be huge for the team. Frelick looking to pass and it didn't complete. And a good defensive stand, the intended receiver, Riley Walsh. This is a big third down. No, it's only the first quarter, but these are game changers right here. If they can third and long, third and six, if they can get them to a three and out right here. You know, they're looking at getting the ball around the 40-yard line. They, you know, they could have something cooking. Big defensive stand. We're gonna have a Thought it was a timeout. Freilich in the shotgun. Three receivers to the near side. Freilich rolling out, looking to pass. And that is going to be caught by number 85, his first reception of the game, they brought Noah a, Monzillo. Sorry, Matt, they brought a blitz on the right side. This guy coming hard on that. I, I just don't feel like, you know, the brought the boxes are, are, are really coming hard on this on, on, on the on the line of scrimmage on these blitzes. I mean, when you when you brought it on the blitz, you gotta bring the pain. And it almost seems like you're, you're like you're not running full speed here. And that's really where the boxers miss a presence like Ajoku DK. Right, but I mean, yeah, listen, it's high school football. You're gonna lose players every year. Someone's gotta step up. And Lord knows, I was not gonna say that last name. <laughs> Get an official measurement. I just I want to point something out. We've had more players, more athletes from Brockton High go on to the Ivy League in the last three or four years. It's very impressive. It is. It's very it is. impressive. Um, Jen Cruz is doing an amazing job over at Brown. She actually was on the cover of uh, ESPN3 uh, I saw that. for the game that they're covering. So uh, really proud. And then you have uh, Vanessa Clairvaux, who's um, not Ivy League school, but University of Alabama is trying to. It's Ivy League for sports. Ivy League for sports. I'll tell you that. Powerhouse. And she's trying to represent Haiti in the Olympics. I saw so, that. Uh, a lot of good stories here for, for Brockton. Matt Caruso up at Bentley along with a few other Brockton Bryant, boxers. Bryant College. Bryant. Yep. Bryant University. Freilich on a fourth and inches. Going to keep it himself rolling out, and he's got it easily. And more. And a few insurance yards for the quarterback, Sal Freilich. And would you like any fries with that? One forty-one left in the first quarter. Brockton is struggling in every facet of the game right now. Freilich in the shotgun, four receivers. He drops back to pass, looking long, looking deep. Perfect spiral, and it's gonna be caught by number seven, Anthony Bianchi, for a huge 40-yard gain for the Minutemen. You cannot let that happen, it was triple coverage. You cannot let him catch the football. Someone's got to deflect that, Matt. That was triple coverage. Biggest gain of the day for the Minutemen. And 125 left in the first quarter. Brockton looking to escape. And their defender had his hand on that ball. He deflected it. And it was caught by Bianchi. Freilich this time rolling out to the near side. He gets the corner before he is pushed out of bounds. Short gain on that play, Newby. If you're Brockton, what are you doing to stop this Lexington offense? I'll tell you what, um, I'm putting more pressure on the quarterback. I think this rushing three is not working. Um, and, and, I, and, I'd, and I'd seriously consider you know, putting on a spy for Freilich. Rushing three is not working. And, 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 and I think they're not putting enough pressure Another hole, and this is Ben Quint, who's going to find the end zone for the second time today. I'll tell you what, you can run a hummer right through that hole right there. Brockton Boxer just getting completely, completely torn apart in the line of scrimmage. And a wide open hole finds the end zone. Wow. It's the first quarter, and it's an absolute avalanche here in Crumb Field.
Duncan Hewitt to attempt his third extra point of the day. Good on the first two. The ball is snapped, the kick is up, and the kick this time is good. 21 to nothing, the Minutemen on top of the boxers. Well, Matt, we got them right where we want them. So, hey, you know what? The, the, the good thing is it's only the first quarter. And uh, brought the hey, you know, uh, they, they, they were in a fight. Well, to be honest, it's not much of a fight right now. We're, we're, we're down, but it's early on the first, in, in the fourth quarter. First quarter, excuse me. Thank God, not the fourth quarter. So they got an opportunity right now. I wouldn't focus on the score. Just try and get a sustained drive. Now, Matt, I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout-out to uh, my high school that I'm currently at right now, Lynn Tech, winning their first football game this season, 34 nothing versus Chelsea. So shout-out to them. The Avalanche. I call I called the Tech Avalanche. It's actually the Tech Tigers. But it was an Avalanche. Speaking of Avalanche. <laughs> 21 nothing in the first quarter. One minute left in the first as Cundiff receives this kickoff. Cutting to the boxer's sideline. He's taken out, stumbles forward for a few yards. But the boxers are going to start at around their 26-yard line. Got to give a shout-out. Got to give a shout-out. Big game, Miles Jackson. He knew this wasn't going to be a big game. Yeah. <laughs> First game of the season, he it doesn't matter. He said, newbie, you can handle it. He said, newbie, we'll, we'll send the B team up to Lexington. <laughs> <laughs> big game, Miles does it again. You did it again, Miles. You got me. Miles is all fired up for next week's matchup against the Weymouth Wildcats. Oh, yeah. Quick reminder, the last time the boxers played Weymouth, the game ended in overtime on a 98-yard blocked extra point attempt. And Brockton with the 98-yard walk-off return. Wow. Can't make that stuff up. Excellent rush. Hello, how are you doing today? My day is going very well. How's your day going? Not what so good. What timing. What timing by Stevens of the Minutemen. He says good afternoon. He timed that perfectly. He just wanted to say good afternoon. That's it. Just a little how do you do. Hello, how do you do? Good afternoon. How are you doing that? Well, that puts Brockton with a second and 15. At their own 21-yard line. We like to have fun here at BCA oh, Sports. Man. We're having some fun right now. Lex Media. 15 seconds left if I'm Brockton. I'm just, I'm, I'm wasting the clock. I'm taking a <laughs> knee here. Jose Montero Jr. in the shotgun. Five receivers. Jr. back to pass. It's going to be incomplete. It was in his hands. I'll tell you what. I mean, listen, we have, listen, the score is 21 nothing going to the second quarter, but they, they're having the opportunities. Matt, so this game is not even close to being over. So, I mean, the opportunities are there. You know, if they have an opportunity to make some stops on the defense side of the football, they're getting shots on offense. And again, it's a third and 15. Now it's a throwing down. This is no fault of Montero. The receivers have dropped the passes. Right. Off the hands. That one, he caught well, it. Well, he's, he's, he's had a few bad it. passes. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it's fault free, but, you know, I, I don't. I, it's, it's just a few things here and there are causing this 21 to nothing lead. I mean, it's just all snowballing. Paul Mitchell, the intended receiver on the last play. Montero Jr. looking to take another shot. He's looking over the slot, and this one complete to Cundiff. Cundiff is taken down at the 34-yard line, and Brockton is going to have a fourth and a long one. We'll call it two as the first quarter ends. The score at the end of the first quarter, Lexington 21, Brockton nothing. Newby, Brockton's in dire straits right now. Well, they need a good drive, good stop. Good drive, good stop. No longer worry about the scoreboard. Uh, this guy gets a sustained drive over here, chew up the clock. I mean, listen. They're going to get the ball back in the second half. So they can, you know, get us the same drive, get a touchdown on the board. You know, they're not in bad shape right now. It's still early on in the game. Like I said before, you know, a few missed tackles in the first quarter. I mean, first quarter seemed like almost <laughs> two quarters. I mean, it was a long first quarter. But um, 
you know, a few missed tackles, and, 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 and next thing you know, you're down 21 to nothing. If I'm the Broxers, I'm just trying to focus on just having a, a nice, sustained drive and, and, and take one play at a time. Let's see what Coach Colombo, let's see what adjustments he's going to make. Coach Colombo, this is his, wow, can you believe that's 12th season? Started when I was a uh, junior in high school, so that was 2005. Wow, 12th season. You want real legacies. Now assistant coach, Armand Colombo. What's he yeah. on, like 50? Ooh, I don't know. But, uh, what a legend right there, Armand Colombo in the dynasty he helped build. The red hour back of Brockton. Brockton back to punt. End over end kick. Fielded at the 30 yard line. Quint on the reception. Cutting to the Lexington sideline. Picks up a few blockers. And he's pushed out of bounds at the 47. And Lexington with good starting field position just inside midfield. Defense got to be a little tired right now, Peter. I mean, Peters. I'm sorry. I'm so, announced, so used to announcing with Peter back in uh, the high school days. Matthew. Um, shout out to Peter Zimbor. I'll forgive it. Yeah. Forgive it. <laughs> shout out to Peter Zimbor. When you've won seven awards and nominated for an Emmy, you can make a few mistakes. I can make a few mistakes. But um, I lost my train of thought now. Well, I don't know what I was going <laughs> to say. Peter Zimbor. High I was school. going to say something before that, but I completely lost my train of thought. Go boxers. <laughs> you talk legacies in Brockton sports. Let's talk about Paul Mandeville. Whoa. Easy. To be named in the, in the not, same. Not be, really that it's phenomenal, but it's been around forever. We're talking about 10 years here. 10 years. Paul Mandeville. To be mentioned the same paragraph be as Paul Mandeville. 30 30 years? I don't know. 25? It's close to that. And it's shocking. He's only 40 years old. Yeah, I know. He's been starting since like, he's been doing this since he was like five years old. Freilich pass complete to Bianchi, who's got a first down and more, and a late flag thrown in deep in the secondary. It's going to be like holding. i tell you what, one of the coaches is hot right now. It's holding. I think it might be coming back here. You talk about hot coaches. Coach O'Brien of the boxers. He's always at 110. Oh, yeah. Always. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be holding against the Minutemen, so a little bit of a break for the boxers. It's going to be second. You know that song, 0 to 100? He's 0 to 110. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I go 0 to 110 real quick. Real quick. And there's no zero. <laughs> it's just, it's 110 to 110. Yeah, as he's hearing this, he's now at 120. <laughs> Split receivers for the Minutemen. Freilich in the shotgun. Freilich going to keep it himself. Now... A little bit of a pass complete to Bianchi. Spins off the hit. We have a flag thrown in. So there's three key names here to watch on the Minuteman offense. Sal Freilich, of course, the starting quarterback. Anthony Bianchi. I'm going to call him a tight end. He's listed as a slot receiver. He's a tight end. And Ben Quint, senior running back, who is, I don't know whether he's hes riding an armored vehicle through that hole in the box's defensive line <laughs> or what. We, we got to send him, like, we got to send him out to Afghanistan. He's just, he's crushing everything right crushing now. Crushing everything. The guy's a machine. 
thought there was some kind of rule against putting machines on the field in high school football, but <laughs> to each his own. Freilich back to pass, looking long, looking deep. It's going to be broken up very nicely by number nine of the boxers. Good that play right there, good deflection. Marquis Dos Santos, junior defensive back. Good presence of mind right there, stuck right on him like glue. Big third down right here. They got to get off the field. Third and about 14 for the Minutemen. Four receivers set. Bianchi the man in motion. Freilich back to pass. He's going to throw it to Quint, who finds a hole. Big surprise there. He's got a first down and more. Ben Quint running all over the Boston boxers. Missed tackle right there. Had an opportunity to stop him before he got to the first down marker. And again, you're only rushing three. You know, I, I think they got to put a little more pressure on line of scrimmage. This defense I think, been on the I field think you got to stack the box here. This defense has been on the field for a long time, Matt. They got to be a little tired. You got to stack the box. You got to put five to six defensive linemen. It's Bianchi with another one. Well, that time they rushed four, it didn't make much of a difference. <laughs> I mean, but he has, I mean, listen, give credit where credit's due. The offensive line is doing a dynamite job and giving the quarterback enough time to make a play. Four receivers. Quint to the left of Freilich. Freilich rolling out to the near side. He's going to throw across his body. And that one's going to be popped up, intended for Bianchi, and fall incomplete. Good rush right there by the boxers of a penalty here. It's going to be holding against the Minutemen, so we now encounter a second and about 12. It's a good break right there for the boxers. Brockton needs a stop on this set of downs. Got eight minutes and 54 seconds left in the second quarter, 21 nothing, Lexington on top. Holding call against Lexington. Gonna be second and 12 for Lexington. Different set for the Minutemen. Three receivers to the near side. Clean on the far side. Quint flanking Freilich to his right. You gotta think deep pass here. Trips to the near side. Look for the cross right here. They may be crossing a few times. Freilich rolling out to the far side. Keeps it himself. Gets tripped up behind the line. A loss of about three and a late flag after the play. Personal foul. Oh. oh, you can't have that. Personal foul against the boxers. 15 yards. A free first. Oh, it was gonna be Nelly. it was gonna be third and fifteen. The boxers were oh. gonna be sitting pretty. Jeez Louise. First down, prime field position, close to the red zone. You're down by 21. Number six, we believe, Zion Tavares, junior defensive back, called for the personal foul. First and 10 from the Brockton 30 yard line for Lexington. And that's a breakdown that just can't happen. You're going to have third and 15 for this potent Lexington offense, and now they got a free first. Quinn with a one-handed catch on the pitch, and he's got a hole and then some. He's all the way up past the 20 to the 18-yard line. Ben Quint, newbie, he's going to be named the MVP game ball before the first half is even over. I'll tell you what, great block right there by Anthony Buschini for the Minutemen. 
allowing an extra few more yards for the running back. Freilich in the shotgun. Four receivers split to each side. Freilich fakes the pitch, gets br brought down immediately by number 45, Dimitri Doranville. Definitely not a field goal to range right here, so this is probably four down territory for Lexington. Timeout called by Brockton, second and nine for the Minutemen. Box is leading right now. They, they need a turnover. They need a break. You know, need a break on special teams. Something to go their way to give them some type of momentum right now. Because I mean, after, really, after the first few offensive players in the first quarter, there hasn't been much positive going on. They need some type of break, and they got to force a turnover. Wow, great job by Brock between the axis on live debate coverage. Uh, Live to tape debate coverage. It was a fun, fun night last night. Yeah. Interesting. So make sure you got some some vote. shots fired. Now that we're up in Lexington, the start of the Revolutionary yeah. War. <laughs> some shots fired that we didn't expect. So uh, September 19th, primary day, correct? September 19th, November 7th, general election. If you don't if vote, if you don't complain, if you don't vote, vote don't complain. Yeah. All right. I was going to say, and guys, you don't, guys say if you don't complain, don't please, vote. Please, <laughs> please come and visit us. We've got voter registration forms in our lobby. Oh, cool. Excellent. So come visit us. Request the Mad Dog. Request the Postman. Request T-Bone. Come and visit you. Have a little conversation. Have a little convo. little convo. A little conversation. No days off. We're always there. A little conversation. Scary. This is scary. Freilich alone in the backfield. Two receivers to each side. I think he's going to keep it himself. Rolls out to the far side. Throws over the middle. Yeah. Complete to Bianchi. And again, Newby, the defense just can't stop these three guys. Tough play right there. I mean, rolling to the right, throwing across his body, throwing to the left. Very difficult. That is enough for a first down. And yeah, they're going to call. They're going to say it's a, a good enough for a first down. I see Vanessa Clairvaux in the stands. We can get her up here. We can talk a little bit. One of Brockton's best. Freilich, pass complete to Bianchi. He is hit immediately and brought down. Second and goal, nine yard line. 7.06 left in the second quarter. Freilich again in the shotgun, trips to the far side. Freilich is going to be a false start against Lexington. So that will knock the Minutemen back to the 14-yard line. Six and a half to go now in the first half. 21-0. The Minutemen over the Boxers. Three guys that just can't be stopped for the Minutemen. Quarterback Sal Freilich, tight end Anthony Bianchi, and senior running back Ben Quint. And Freilich is hit behind the line of scrimmage for a big loss. It's going to be third and goal from the 19. So we're gonna get a little treat for you guys. Trying to get Vanessa Clairvaux up here, a little track star. 
I should say Lutra, big time track star. Big time, big time. Big time, time big time, big time. Freilich back to pass. It is complete to Ben Quint, who, big surprise, finds a hole. Spins off a hit, and he's into the end zone. His third touchdown of the day. Ben Quint out of nowhere, creating something from nothing. And that's a 19-yard touchdown run on third and goal for Ben Quint. He went whoop, then he went whoop, then whoop, then whoop, then whoop, then whoop. Then what did he do? Then he went whoop, then whoop. What a spin move right there. Matthew, look who I found. I found track star. Track star. Vanessa Clairvaux in the house. Straight, gonna, straight from the SEC. Straight from the SEC. I'm going to give her the microphone. Um, Vanessa, first and foremost, congratulations on this, everything you've accomplished. You've really put on for the city of Brockton. I, I just, I just kind of want to get your thoughts. I mean, how was the season? How are you doing now? What, what, what's the word? What is the word? Well, first of all, I'm so happy to be back home. That's always like an incredible feeling, especially to be welcomed as I have been since I've been here. But um, yeah, I graduated University of Alabama now. Um, alumni, got my senior ring on finally. Okay, cool. <laughs> along with my Brockton High rings, so that's a nice stuff, feeling. Stuff. Um, and with financial planning, consumer affairs, um, and now I moved to the Miami, Florida area to run track professionally. Awesome, so, so I'm, I'm hearing you, you, you'd wanna, your goal is to represent Haiti in the Olympics? Yes, the goal has always been to represent Haiti, so the goal is still to represent Haiti. Um, so I will be competing for Haiti internationally at the Indoor World Championships in March which will be my first like big meet representing them and then the Caribbean Championships next summer um, and the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo, Japan. Wow, that, that, that's definitely a beautiful thing. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. For you know anyone who's listening right now who's either playing track, football, basketball, mm -hmm. what have you, who wants to go to that next level and play mm -hmm. Division One sports, mm -hmm. or play sports in general, talk about the amount of commitment that it takes to get to that level on, on the academic side and also on, on the athletic side? The level of commitment, as you can imagine, is, um, I mean, honestly, like, what I've learned throughout my collegiate career is that you really need to balance everything. There, you can't expect to go from high school to any division um, or college athletics um, just kind of working off of just talent. Like, you really do need to... Um, know why you're working so hard. I think that was a big thing for me, your why power. Mm -hmm. When you know why you work so hard, why you go to practice every day, you know, why you're doing that sport, then that's what pushes you. Um, and that's also going to push you in the classroom too because if you don't stay eligible, then you're wasting an ed a, a massive opportunity. Um, not only, even if you're not getting a, ma you know, a full scholarship, um, it's an opportunity to just go to college and be able to be a collegiate athlete at the same time. You know, it's a family, so. Vanessa, freshman year of high school, did you know something special was starting when you went to uh, try out for the Brockton High track team? I did not. I mean, I think I did it for the same reason most freshmen do it. You know, you just want to do something after school. Um, you know, your other your friends are doing it. And, I, you know, in junior high and elementary, you know, I would always do, like, the field days. And I just enjoyed being an athlete. Um, and honestly, my freshman year at Brockton High, I did fail off the team spring spring season. So I didn't finish my spring spring season. And I think for the next three years, it, you know, that it showed me like this can be taken from you quickly. Um, you know, I don't remember what class was probably like freshman history or something, you know. But um, it really pushed me those last three years to see, wow, like I really have something in my hands that if I don't, you know, take advantage of it, it can disappear any day, so. Alabama, <laughs> probably the athletic capital of college sports. Yeah, yeah. Crimson Tide. Did you ever get to make it to a football game? Oh, yeah. I went to all the home games. We went, I actually traveled to LSU, Ole Miss, and Mississippi State. Um, I think, I've never been to an Auburn game, but for sure, yeah. Home what, games, away what's it games. Like? What's it like? What's it like? It's way more intense than you would think it is like where you think like how you th how intense and powerful you think the stadium is it's like 10 times that like the music the crowd the people the band it's so live and so empowering it's um a really nice event i miss it this is my first season not at a football game so you know vanessa one thing that really um 
And, you know, we could talk about the football game, but who wants to talk about the football game? They're down 28 to nothing. Oh, my so goodness. So let's, let's talk about some positive stuff. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, um, you know, w w one thing I, I do enjoy is, uh, you know, I had a chance to follow your career, and, you know, mm -hmm. from Broughton High School and, and, and seeing what you did in Alabama is that you kind of always stay true to yourself and mm -hmm. true, you know, to representing Broughton, mm -hmm. um, you know, representing the Haitian culture, you know, yes. personally for me, you know, with, you know, even being Haitian myself, you know, I, and a lot of Broughton Haitian people really appreciate that. And just Broughton in general as a city. Um, you know, to talk about why that, that's important to kind of never forget your foundation, you know, your high school, your culture and so forth. Yeah, I, I think you represent that on, on a daily basis. Yeah, I do. I mean, that's you. I mean, you kind of answer it yourself. That's, that's, that was my foundation. And I've um, come to realize that you're – if you don't have a strong foundation, then you can continue to build, but you know, it's just like any other building, you know, it'll come crumbling down. So if I know that my foundation has been on the strength of my parents who immigrated here from a third world country, and now, you know, we have a beautiful home, my brother and I both went to college, my brother and I were both athletes, um, you know, if I can see that, you know, I was, my foundation's off of my culture and my city, the city of champions, throughout my whole life in Brockton, whether it was at the, Dav the Edgar B. Davis School, which is where I went to school, or at Brockton High, I've never, like the, the culture of athletics in Brockton is to be a champion. If you're not a champion with a gold medal, a champion at heart and a champion at mind. Right. So. That's deep right there. No, so. Put that into a quote, put that into a hallmark no. card. <laughs> so How that, does that translate to the college level? Oh, I mean, Honestly, I mean, I mean, honestly, I think it was the same thing because I did go to Eastern Michigan first, Eastern Michigan University, and I had a great time there. I loved it. But, you know, I just wanted something more because only for the simple fact that I knew I could get something more. So a lot of people assumed something happened or, you know, it was a bad school. No, it was an amazing program. I loved my teammates. I loved, you know, my the campus and everything. But I didn't want to wait until the championship season to go against those yeah, the SEC, Alabama. Those big girls, you know, right. those big-time girls. I wanted to be a big-time girl, so I put myself in that environment. Uh, last question, Vanessa. Um, I mean, everyone wants to know, um, when are we going to race? Ah. I, listen, I've been trying to get this race on schedule at point. I, you can videotape it. I want to race. I want to see how has defeated the top ten boxer track athletes of all time. Let's see. challenged them all to – you have defeated. Oh, all I of did. Oh, Every okay. Have you look at? You oh. don't even know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all I can say Let's about racing, all I can say about racing is my warm up is an hour and twenty minutes, and I need to make sure that I'm fit for my spikes. Um, so well, after the hour and twenty minutes, shoot uh -huh. me an email, Facebook message, give okay. me a call. I'll meet you. I want to see how fast I am to a track side. Listen, I've been challenging you since high school, so. Oh, my God. I don't, I don't care how old you well, are. I don't, it's been if five I see, years. If I see you on a track, it's going down oh right my. now. Let me make sure that if I'm on a track and I Listen, see you, I'm ready right now. I just run away. I got my track suit on right now. I'm ready to go right now. Oh, my God. Brockton track, High, I'm ready to go right Brockton now. Brockton High is home next week against hey. Weymouth. Yes. How about a little pregame <laughs> race here? Let's hope I'm still here <laughs> because I don't – I was supposed to go back to Florida, but, you know, considering the right, hurricane, right. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, staying in the city course staying up here hope, hope everything goes well down there as well yes definitely praying for everyone in those areas absolutely but um if i see you in a track listen i'm just letting you know i'm ready i'll just i'll, I'll be in church shoes i'll be ready oh my he's, goodness he's wearing his track suit right now he yeah. is wearing he, his track he suit knew this was gonna happen. yeah i knew i was gonna see you too. i'm like i gotta be ready he you never like, know i might see vanessa i see i see well, don't look now. Brockton High putting together quite a drive. Yeah, maybe we should just keep talking to Vanessa and maybe they'll do well. Maybe, maybe she's a lucky charm. I came for my um, shout-out to number 88, Isaiah Laguerre. That's my baby cousin. There we go. All right, shout-out <laughs> to, shout to Vanessa's cousin right there. Um, <laughs> Vanessa. Both, that's my blood. That's why we athletic. Come hey, on. listen, Come on, man. Let, let's, let's bring it home. Let's bring <laughs> it home. Let, let's start this comeback. I Vanessa, know. I want to say thank you. For, for joining us and thank you everything thank you've done you. for, for the city and, and putting and put Brockton, uh, you, yourself and a lot of other athletes are, are putting Brockton on the map. Yes, um, yes. Because you guys are good people first and foremost, and then the athlete part just, you know, propels that to the next level. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for joining us, and uh, wish you the best. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Back to game action. It's a third and about one for the boxers who are now within the 20 yard line.
of the Lexington Minutemen for the first time this game. Two forty-eight left to go. We're gonna have a measurement. Twenty-eight nothing. The Minutemen are on top of the boxers. Yeah, it's gonna be fourth and short. So fourth and half a yard. Look for the quarterback keeper here, Jose Montero Jr. Lexington stack in the box. Montero under center. Rosen Pierre is right behind him. Quarterback keeper, Montero Jr. diving forward. I think he's got enough for a boxer first down. He does, and it will be first and 10 from about the 15 yard line. First and 10 from the 15 yard line. Two and a half minutes to go in the first half. Jose Montero Jr. in the shotgun. Receiving the snap, keeping it himself. Now pitching out to number 45, who has a hole and he's in for a boxer touchdown. And Brockton is on the board with two minutes and 15 seconds left to go in the first half, but a flag is down after the play. Let's get the conference of officials as we await the call. It's coming back, it's holding against the boxers. Touchdown negated. And a 10 yard penalty, so it'll be first and 10, uh, first and now 20 from the 25 yard line. They're calling it an illegal block. So it's first and 15 from the 20. Same formation, two receivers to the near side. Cundiff now the man in motion. Extra protection on the right side. Montero Jr. in the shotgun. I'm back, Matt. I'm back. Hand off to Rosen Pierre. Cuts up the middle. Finds a hole. And he gets close to the original line of scrimmage. Matt, and they, they, some. they got to punch this in. They got to punch this in. This they have a, to. They have this to. is huge right here. Going to halftime. They got to get some time momentum. You got to punch it in. Go home. Wow, this is a long half. This has been going on for about an hour and an hour and 15 minutes. Second down and six for the boxers. Hand off to Rosen Pierre, who finds a little bit of a hole, pushes forward. It's going to be a third and about two. So we learned something today. At least I did. I did not know that Vanessa Clairvaux was booted off of the Brockton High track team as a freshman. Yeah, she actually told that story. Jay Miller did a piece on that. Um, Jay Miller was actually one, one of the first weeks Jay Miller worked at BCA. We did a story on her, and she mentioned that, you know, she was kicked off the, the team because of academics, and, you know, she had to pick herself back up and, um, and, 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 and really focus on school, and she got herself a Division One scholarship. Pitch out to Cundiff. He's got a hole. He's got his eyes on the end zone. He dives. That's going to be a touchdown from the boxers. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 59 seconds left to go in the first half. It only took them. It only took them <laughs> until there was a minute left hey, in the first hey, half hey, to punch hey, it in. Hey, pain is temporary. It may last a minute. It may last an hour, but eventually it will subside. Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. With the touchdown for the boxers. Extra point attempt. Ball is snapped low. The kick is up. And the kick is good. It's good. It's all good. 28 to 7. Brockton has started mounting the comeback. Hey, Reggie, it's good. Remember that? Nutty professor. <laughs> <laughs> 
Reggie. Oh yeah. Hey Reggie, yeah. it's good. We would like to we'd like to take it this opportunity. Good. We'd like to take this opportunity to remind you that the Falcons blew a twenty eight to three lead. Yes. Okay, let's let's let that distract us from the fact okay that they blew a twenty eight let's 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 just stay on point here. Yeah, this is a long first half. It's a very long first half. I mean, it doesn't help that there's now been five touchdowns scored. <laughs> exactly. We're kind of close. I got a Brockton Bucks game at 630. Ooh, got speed right through. Also coming up at the halftime, the Lexington High School cheerleaders. Keep in mind the cheerleader for a day, October 7th. Sign up with Coach Laura. Now with the cheerleaders. So watch out! I mean, if I'm Lexus, I'm I'm pushing the uh, the metal pedal to the metal here. I'm trying to get a score one more time before the halftime. Brock the boxes, get the ball back in the second half. Spinning kick taken by number three, Andrew Elbert, the junior uh, tight end. Fumble! The ball is out. Who's got it? There's a huge pile. Brockton's calling for it. Oh, this is the break that they need. This is the break that I was talking about. Well, this is the break that they could have had. <laughs> they could have had. They could have had. It's going to be Lexington ball. You know what? That pile punctured the ball. It did. They just oh, threw. Wow. A, they just threw a flat football over to the sideline. <laughs> Jeez, where's Tom Brady we need him? Come on. Where's Hello. <laughs> where's that air guy? Come on, go on. Get him over here. Quick. <laughs> Punctured the ball. What that reminds me of, Vince Wilfork intercepted the ball at one point in his career. Yes. And he fell on it. <laughs> And that poor ball was never used in the oh National Football God. League again. Oh, what a poor ball. Rest in peace, ball. Freilich back to pass. He's being pressured. He's going to turn the corner at the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35, running out of bounds. I'll tell you what, Matt, his speed is annoying. <laughs> That's the best way I can explain. He has annoying speed. I mean, you just, you're so close to tackling him. It's like Eli Manning. You're so close. You try to wrap him up, he just gets away. Forty-two seconds left to go. Brockton looking to escape, only down by three touchdowns. A lot taller of a task when you're facing Freilich, Bianchi, and the man with the ball now, Ben Quint. Quint charges ahead for a gain of about three yards. It is going to be a third and a long two. Brockton needs to stop right here. Stack the box. Stack the box. Stack They're it. running it. They're Stack running it. it. Stack it. Timeout called here by Lexington. So with 33 seconds left in the first half, 28 to seven, the Minutemen on top of the Boxers. Got to get Vanessa Clairvaux back up here. Yeah. Foxes score a few more touchdowns. <laughs> That was a good luck charm right there. It's a beautiful day. The sun coming through, breaking up the clouds here in Lexington. Oh, glorious day, glorious day. It's perfect weather for a barbecue. I'm known to crash a few of them. Just a few. Three men on the line of scrimmage for Brockton. A very spread out defense. Freilich looking to pass. Pressured by number seven of the boxers. He's going to be forced to throw it into the boxer's sideline. Excellent pressure for the boxers by Nathaniel Deroulis. So fourth and two 
for the Minutemen. 26 seconds left in the first half. And punting formation for the first time today. Anthony Bianchi is the punter. This one a short end over end kick. That goes maybe about three yards in the air from the line of scrimmage. And I tell you what, they can take a few shots. 15 seconds, you got time for yeah, two can, and a half shots. You can, yeah, you, you, get, you got a chance to you know, take at least two shots in the end zone. Maybe you know, get a long pass, throw a timeout. Throw a timeout, call a timeout after a long pass. Throw a timeout, call a pass. Yeah, <laughs> either way. I would send out, I would put one less lineman on, on the offensive line and have a fifth receiver. You know, I don't think that works. I think you give quarter, a quarterback more time, he will find an open spot eventually. I've always felt that way. That prevent defense always goes against you. Three receivers in Rosen as Montero Jr. back to pass. Looking long, looking deep, gonna keep it himself. Picks up a few blocks and gets crushed from three different directions. And a immediate timeout called with five seconds left. No time for a Hail Mary here. Do you, do you try the long field goal? No, you do a Hail Mary. I mean, this is this is long field goal for an NFL player. And we're looking at a... Well, a field goal would be above 47, 48 yards. Yeah, give or take. Five seconds left, time for one more play. It looks like Brockton is going to go for the Hail Mary. Split receivers, Rosenpierre on the far side. See, five receivers, I was right. This is Brett Farr's favorite play, everyone just go. Trips to the near side. <laughs> Montero Jr. in the shotgun, he's gonna get rid of it quick. He's looking long and deep towards the end zone. It's going to be broken up. Almost intercepted as time expires. 28 to seven at the end of the first half. The Minutemen on top of the boxers. Newbie, what's the what's the halftime speech left for, uh, for Peter Colombo and the boxers? Tackle. Yeah, got tackle. They're missing too many tackles. I mean, it's as simple as that. You make your tackles, I mean, you, you stop those huge chunks of, of yardage. They gotta be more disciplined tackling the football. Well, the score again, the Lexington Minutemen leading the Brockton boxers by a score of 28 to seven. At the end of the first half, Brockton will receive the second half kickoff. And we're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you the second half of action right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key? is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, football fans of all ages, welcome in to Dr. Harold Crumfield here on the campus of Lexington High School for second half action between your Brockton Boxers and the Lexington Minutemen. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action alongside my broadcast partner, the seven-time award-winning director and producer, Emmy-nominated, but those are just stats and numbers, Nubi Rato. Nubi, Brockton, a very convincing last drive of the first half. Yeah, very good last drive, so at least they got some momentum going to halftime, but it means nothing if they don't keep that momentum here. Big drive for them in the opening drive. Um, you know, kudos, you know, they, they're they going to get the ball back here in the second half. So, you know, they got to make a count right now. Got to make a count. Big drive right now. Um, they need a sustained effort. At, at the very least, a nice, long, sustained drive to uh, to get some momentum for the offense. Cundiff with the return, and he's brought down by a gang of Minutemen. 
at around the 13 yard line. Some room to play with for starting quarterback Jose Montero Jr. Looked very good in his first game of action in almost two years. Did look, actually look very good, I thought. Uh, I thought he was, um, you know, the ball came off the hands very well. You know, I thought he, you know, a few breaks they could have had, a few drops by some receivers. But, um, he, he's, he's, he's been okay. I thought, um, you know, there's some room for improvement, but definitely a good start in terms of him moving and throwing the football. It's just a matter of um, catching a few breaks, literally and figuratively. First and 10 from the 15 for the boxers. Jose Montero Jr. in the shotgun. Handing off to Pierre Rosen. And he's brought down for a short loss. It'll be second and about 12. Beautiful day for action. Thought it was going to rain. And now we have the official weather report brought to you by the Mad Dog Research Team. It is 72 degrees, a balmy 72. Balmy. A slight breeze gusts up to 10 miles an hour coming out of the southeast. Blowing right, uh, left to right across your field. Great job by the research team. Always doing good Great work. Great job. Great job. It was, it was partly cloudy. Breaking news, it is still partly cloudy. Across the body, Cundiff has a diving reception. A gain of about 25 yards for the boxers and a first down at the 47 yard line. Great catch right there. A little under thrown. If he threw it a little ahead, maybe a yard or two ahead, he would have been gone for six points right there. So to brought the boxers, big pickup right there, big play, big momentum changer. On the reception was the lone touchdown score for the boxers, Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. Montero Jr. brought down immediately. It'll be a second and 10 from the 48 yard line. A little thunder here. Thunder. No lightning thunder. though, so a little thunder. Th -th -thunder. The only thunder I'm worried about is the thunder of the Brockton boxes. That's the only thunder I'm worried about. I'm worried about our roar. I'm kind of worried about Hurricane Irma. Yes, that, that Just is. Just a little bit. Yes, a little bit. Just a little bit. Not yet, no. Not yet. Second and nine for the boxers. Trying to create some booming thunder. Montero Jr. Receives a slow snap, throwing long and deep, looking for number nine, overthrown by a few yards. Yeah, a little too much, a little too much mustard on that throw right there. Paul Mitchell, the senior wide receiver, intended on the pass. I think it's just a little rust. I mean, a few throws he's thrown a, a yard or two under, um, but you know, definitely good arm strength. I mean, balls come out of his hands pretty well. It's just a matter of just, you know, it's just a little rust. It's first game of the season. 8.51 left to go in the third quarter. 28-7, minute men on top of the boxers. But again, big offensive drive right here for the Broughton Boxers. They can cut this down to a two possession, two touchdown uh, lead. That'd be huge. Scoring on two consecutive offensive possessions. Split receivers, two to each side for the boxers. Rosen flanking Montero to his left. Montero receiving the snap, looking long again, throwing to the far sideline, and it's going to be broken up intended for Cundiff. You know, I think boxers have a little more luck if they go in towards the middle of the field. I mean, they're, they're throwing deep these long vertical routes towards the side. They're getting most of their completions right down the middle. And you got out of your receivers, go right in the middle of the field and take some chances. Fourth and nine, Brockton looking to punt. A couple of shout outs. This, of course, not just a production of BCA Sports but also Lex Media. I'll tell you what, man, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm going for this on fourth down. You have midfield, you're down by three touchdowns. What the heck do you got to lose? Brockton punting it away, almost kicking it into the blocker, and this one's gonna take a Brockton bounce as it heads down towards the 10 yard line. I don't know about that one. 
I mean, every opportunity, I mean, I, I think, you know, they have some opportunities to make some plays here down the middle of the field. Let's uh, at least, you know, let's see on this one. Hopefully the boxers can hit them on three and now get the ball back in good field position. That's probably Coach Colombo's thinking. Anyway, where were we? Oh, yes, tag team action. Yes. BCA Sports, Lex Media bringing you all the action from Lexington High School. That is a cool name, Lex, Lex Media. Media. That's, like, that's like classified, you know, just like. We're both on Twitter. Follow us is at Lex Media, at Brockton Channel. MVC, CBS, and Lex Media. It's like, it's like platinum. This know? one pitched out to the far side, complete to number 88, and he is clotheslined. Riley, Riley Walsh just got straight WWE clotheslined. Tattooed on that play right there. Marquis Dos Santos on the convincing tackle for the boxers. Second and six for the Minutemen. Quarterback keeper, Freilich, cutting out to the far side. A gain of about three yards before he's running out of bounds. I tell you what, Freilich has just been an absolute monster this game. I mean, this, this kid has really taken over the game right from the start. He had a tough first few plays in the game, but uh, I mean, he's, he's really just taking control. Third down, Lexington. It's, it's that Eli Manning annoying speed. <laughs> it's just like, you, just when you think you have him, he's right there. He's flanked by hat trick touchdown scorer Ben Quint. Now Freilich rolling out. He's going to pass complete to number seven, the big tight end, Anthony Bianchi, and he's got a first down at the 41 yard line. And man, that's what I'm telling you right there. They're going right down the middle of the field, and that's what the Boston Box has got to do. I mean, you know, this vertical passing game is all well and good, but listen, you got to go right down the middle of the field and take some chances. I know your linebackers in there, you get a chance to, you know, get knocked down hard. But you gotta go right in the middle of the field and, and really create some havoc down there. Three receivers, two to the near side, one to the far side. Ben Quint to the left of Sal Freilich. Freilich rolling out towards the boxer sideline, looking to throw across his body, and he's gonna be hit, spins off the hit with the annoying speed, Jeez, cutting back, me. and he's got some room to run. Sal Freilich to the 50, to the 45, 40, oh. to the 30. He breaks another yes. tackle and taken down at the 22-yard line. Sal Freilich, newbie, you mentioned it. That Woo. Eli Manning, annoying speed. He went what? Whoop! And then he went whoop! And then whoop! Then whoop! Then whoop! Then whoop! Then whoop. I, wow. I, th I think he did one more. He, he, went, he went whoop! <laughs> Jeez Louise. I mean, it's, 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 it's like a mixture of like Eli Manning and Doug Flutie. It's just, you just when you have them in your grasp. Never forget, Richard Seymour had Eli Manning that Super Bowl, had him wrapped up. Couldn't bring him down. False start against the Minutemen. And if it's not Freilich, it's Quint. If it's not Quint, it's Bianca. But, but I'm going to tell you what, on that last play right there, the Boxers are so busy trying to fight the football. <laughs> they... They just the, the go for the hit. The go for the hit. Was two inches away from you. Got to go for the tackle. You know, you, 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 they almost give him too much respect. You know, big number seventy-four, Fabian Morales, a sophomore lineman. He's got to be six-six, probably somewhere close to three hundred, with some good speed. He had Freilich in his in his clutches. I want some nasty. This one's Quint, who's going to be wrapped up. Five yards south of the line of scrimmage, so it's going to be second and about 20. Well, Greg Popovich from San Antonio Spurs, like, guys, we got to play tougher. I want some nasty. Got to get mean here. This is football. One thing I like about Pop, just a quick side note, he's not a very vocal coach, but he knows when to, when to say something and what to say. He's the Bill Belichick of basketball. Completely agree. Freilich in the shotgun, fakes the handoff, and there you go. Again, annoying speed. Freilich breaks loose, throws it long and deep towards the end zone, broken up very nicely, intended for Bianchi. But I'm telling you, what, Matt, this kid right now that we're watching, 
He's a player, okay? This kid can play. And I've seen a lot of quarterback play doing these games for a long time. And he's one, of the be he's one of the better quarterbacks I've seen in terms of throwing the football and having pocket awareness. This kid, is he a senior? He is a senior, yes. Okay, this kid is going to have some schools looking at him. I'll tell you that right now because, wow. It's good, for, it's good for Brockton when Lexington comes to uh, Marciano next year that this kid's not going to be here. Well, that pass was broken up by Paul Mitchell. Fralick. Quick pass broken up. Got Couldn't that handle it. Was James Lane, the senior tight end. That was a lollipop. You got to catch that. That was a meatball. And now, Lexington for the first time all game. That's a real stat. For the first time all game, Lexington is lining up to punt the football. I believe they punted before, if I'm not mistaken. They have not? They have not. Okay. They have not. I'll trust the research team. High end over end punt headed towards the end zone. Oh, that's a killer. Pinned at the five yard line. The Brockton return man thought that it was going to take a good bounce into the end zone and be a touchback, but now Brockton staring at a 95 yard natural grass field in front of them and this is why I said before Brockton had to go for on that fourth and ten you know you have nothing to lose now you're at your at the three yard line you have to go 97 yards you know what we gotta we gotta cut you off the mad dog research team coming in the clutch there was one previous punt for Lexington Three yards from the line of scrimmage. Yes. So uh, the newbie research team was on top of that. Poor uh, Mike the Postman Simmons up there pulling double duty for the yeah. newbie research team and the Mad Dog research team. Cut it to the both research teams. Doing a great job. A little tandem action here. Jose Montero Jr., quarterback keeper. He's got some room to run. He's got a first down and more all the way to the 28-yard line. And the boxers have a little bit of breathing room. I have a lot of breathing room right there. Saw a lot of green. I'll tell you what, if he... Uh, if he turned it up a notch, you might have saw end zone. But that's the play, if I'm Jose Montero Jr., that's the play that's got me a little bit nervous in the back of my mind, taken down by his shoelaces. Right. Coming off the torn ACL, looking very good, good run speed, good arm I'm strength. I'm saying two years ago when he had broke that for, the, for a touchdown. He, he was He's green a right little, there. A little bit hesitant on that run. First and 10 for the boxers from the 28-yard line. Montero hands off to Rosen, who is wrapped up immediately. Pushing forward. Gain of maybe about one. Big week coming up for Boxer Athletics. Tuesday night. Soccer game at Marciano Stadium. Nice. And Friday night lights. Weymouth Wildcats come to town to face the Brockton Boxers in the home opener. How many Wildcats are there in, in Massachusetts sports? Every other team is called Wildcats. Well, every team that's not a Wildcat is some variation of the Indians. Jose Montero Jr. taking this one. Of course, the Lexington High School Minutemen mimicking the mascot of the University of Massachusetts. That's over my head, Matt. Amherst. Amherst is also the Minutemen. Yes, that is correct. Division I football have not won a game in like three seasons. Ouch. This pass caught for another first down for the boxers. Pass to Dornville. 
Dimitri Dorenville, the big tight end, with that reception. Don't look now, three and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Brockton's threatening. Brockton's threatening, better threatening quicker. As blockers. This is Cundiff, flag thrown as Cundiff's taken out after a gain of about four yards, but there are towels on the field. And it's gonna be a holding, that's gonna come back 10 yards. Holding against number nine of the boxers, Paul Mitchell. So instead of a second and six, it's going to be first and 20. Brocked in with some personnel changes. As Jose Montero gives the marching orders to the boxers. Trips to the near side. The handoff to Rosen. Rosen Pierre is. He's brought down after a gain of maybe about two. Second and 20. Second and 20, officially no gain. This is this is the most important drive of the game for the boxers. If they don't convert here, they're going to have a tough time trying to win this game. It's really an uphill battle, but it, the door might be shut if they don't score right here. Offsides, looks like. No flags thrown. Now there's one thrown way back in the secondary. As this one is caught by Cundiff. He may have not gone in the neutral zone, so. Let's see. As it stands, a gain of about six. This one's going to go against the Minutemen. Holding against Lexington, so. Let me get a nice break over here. Nice break. Nice break. It's going to go from the previous line of scrimmage. Ten yards north. And that is going to be good. For an automatic first down for the boxers. Two minutes and one second left in the third quarter. Huge break right there. Huge. First down, Brockton. Four split receivers. Montero Jr. in the shotgun now trips to the far side. Quick little outlet to Rosen, who heard footsteps and just couldn't hold on to it. Good play right there by Lexington. Got to hold on to the football. I'm be quite frank with you. Actually, if you held on to the football, might have been a loss of a play. Probably actually wouldn't have been a bad. <laughs> Probably bad better thing. he didn't get it. Yeah. But nonetheless, definitely felt the remnants. Not only did Rosenpier feel footsteps, he heard them, he felt them. They were coming for him. Lexington going with the, the jumbo set here, big yeah, number yeah, 78. Yeah, big number 78, big boy. Tenzin Parasager. Easy, Tiger. Easy, Tiger. Sorry on the butcher job on that. Handoff to Rosen Pierre. Breaks one tackle and is immediately hit by three more Minutemen. It's going to be 
dependent on the spot. No gain or a loss of a half yard. Nonetheless, Brockton's been completely manhandled. Um, and, and, and they can't get any real sustained running game. They, if they got to win this game, it's got to be in the air. Which is not something we ever say about a Brockton right. team. Ever. I was shocked when they threw about 10 passes last year. All of last season. Trips to the far side. Montero Jr. back to pass. He's going to roll out to the far side. Throwing. And it's complete. To Jalen Ellerby Cundiff for another boxer first down. One minute even left in the third quarter. Brockton for the first time this half is on the Lexington side of the, the field. This drive is taking up close to the whole third quarter for Brockton. Fumble! Montero loses the ball, picks it up, and is able to charge ahead. It's not going to be a loss, but a gain of about a yard and a half, two yards. Brockton literally escaping. Montero bobbled the snap. <laughs> Something about fumble that, that makes down. you lose your damn mind. I mean, whenever you watch a fumble, you just oh, you, yeah. you go absolutely crazy and you must yell fumble too if you want. You've been watching on Everyone TV. knows the rules. Yeah. Everyone knows the rules. <laughs> you got if the ball is loose, you got to scream fumble at the top of your lungs. You got to lose it. I mean, you everybody be, comes running because you don't know what the hell's going yeah, on. <laughs> you could be having a same conversation about politics or you know, and then Bumbo! Just lose your mind. He could, could be talking about the Pope. Yeah. Bumbo! Bumbo! Everyone stop. Rosen breaks open a run here, and he's got a first down and some insurance yards, a gain of about 15 for Pierre Rosen. Yeah, that's probably the best looking running play right here so far in the third quarter. And that'll probably do it, and that will do it for the third quarter. End of the third quarter, 28 to 7. The Brockton Boxers trying to mount a comeback against the Minutemen of Lexington High. Rosen Pierre leading that effort, the senior running back with a 15 yard run to end the third. And we're gonna switch sides, but Newby. Brockton's had a pretty good second half. Tick, 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 tick. It's the fourth quarter though, so they've had a good half, a good third quarter, but time's ticking right now and they gotta punch it in and they need a turnover. They have not got one turnover this whole game. And they need something to go their way. Whether it's a turnover or a break on special teams, they got to get a break here. Or, you know, listen, if they score, they may not just have enough time to score the football and get two more touchdowns after that. First and 10 for the Boxers from the Lexington 30-yard line. Montero Jr. in the shotgun. Rosen Pierre behind him, Montero rolling out. Quick little pass. Incomplete, intended for Cundiff, and there's a Boxer down on the play. Someone in front of us won the 50-50, and it's 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 rules they have to split that with the uh, announcers. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the rules. Every, everyone knows the everyone rules. Knows the everyone rules. knows the rules. <laughs> <laughs> so this again is a tag team production of Lex Media and Brockton Community Access. Big shout out to the Lex Media crew: Devin Shaw, Sam Claw, and Rick Dorrington. And of course, the man on top of the booth for BCA Sports, Mike the Postman Simmons, with yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. Oh, wow, great power running right there. And it's Rosen Pierre again Big with another bully. boxer first down. Big bully running right there. Give me a lunch money. <laughs> give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me whatever you got. Give me, give me, give me. Not to be forgotten, you're listening to the sultry sounds. Of myself, the Mad Dog, Matt Nelson, and the seven, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven-time award-winning director Russell. and producer, and Emmy-nominated 
Nubi Rato, and as we say Nubi's name, there's a touchdown for the boxers, number 45, running it in from deep, Dimitri Dorenville, from about 20 yards out, and Brockton, don't look now, Nubi, tick, 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 they're only down two touchdowns. Hey, what, let me tell you what I'm impressed with the Brockton box right now, no celebrating. No celebrating. Yeah, we scored a touchdown. We're still down by two more touchdowns, which I'm impressed by. So, like, you know what? We scored. Let's not go crazy here. There's still work to do. I'm impressed with that. Extra kick attempt by Tobel. He's right through the uprights. 28 to 14 with 10-28 remaining in the fourth quarter. A very, very convincing start to the second half for the Brockton Boxers. Of course, I say second half. I don't think Lexington touched the ball in that second half. They might have had one three and out. Well, they haven't, maybe? yeah, it has been one three and out. They haven't scored, I'll tell you that. So, I mean, they just shut them out so far, you know, you know, which is, um, you know, kudos to the Boxers defense. They got to do it two more times. And, uh, and hope to get the football back. I think they got to win this game, though, ultimately in the air. And this is gut check time right now for the Brockton Boxers. Fourth quarter is gut check time. We remind you that both BCA and Lex Media might be the coolest access center name in the state. Lex yeah, Media. Lex Media. It's big time. They're both on Twitter at Lex Media. At Brockton Channel. Kickoff handled at the 10. Running the wrong way and taken down immediately. He might have got to the 11. Good special teams play by the boxers. Both on Twitter, or as former counselor Dennis Nappy would say, both on Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Shout out to Dennis and Napoli. And what, and what do you send? You send twits. <laughs> Sent twits on Twitter. Quick outlet pass caught by Bianchi, and he's brought down by two boxers, a gain of about three. He was going to get past that first tackler. Well, the first he had tackler him wrapped around the waist, and he, he just couldn't bring him down. Nope. He's sending a big lineman for reinforcements. Hey, we have an injury here. Everyone taking a knee. There is a looks Lexington like Minuteman down. It looks like it is... Number seven. A left knee looks like. Anthony Bianchi, the junior tight end. Actually looks like it might be a cramp or something. He's trying to massage it. Brockton, of course, one of the new MIAA rules. Cannot use an injury timeout as a full timeout. So the players cannot leave the field. As they just attempted to do. But Anthony Bianchi, the minute man down. 10.07 left in the fourth quarter. Brockton down by two touchdowns. Of course, at one point down by four touchdowns, we take this opportunity to again remind you the Falcons blew a 28 to 3 lead yes. in the Super Bowl. Cannot let us distract us from that fact, a very important fact that too many times we get distracted from the from the real point of this. Lest we forget, if you don't remember history, it's bound to repeat itself. Yes. And it could repeat itself here today. Never know. Not saying it will it will happen. Of course having Tom Brady has something to do with it. Just a little bit. Yeah, it gives you a little edge. <laughs> Anthony, Bianchi. Anthony Bianchi being helped off the field. Fairing the left knee. That's a huge loss for the Minutemen. Big. Huge. 
He's the leading receiver for the Minutemen today. Frelick in the shotgun. Split receivers two to each side. He is flanked by Ben Quint, who has three of the four Lexington touchdowns. Frelick quarterback keeper pitches it out to Ooh. Quint, who bobbles it. Dangerous. Oh, hello. Easy Tiger. Easy oh, hello. Tiger. Whoa. All right, third and seven. Biggest third down right here in the game for both teams. If they box is going to stop right here, they'll be in real good field goal position. Excuse me, field position. Forget about field goals at this point. Yeah. Need touchdowns. Brockton rushing four. Freilich in the shotgun. There comes the blitz on the right side. Freilich under pressure, and it's going to be complete for a first down to number 39. Cool, calm, collected, calculated confidence. And composure. Ryan Blanchard, the senior wide receiver. On the reception, first down, Minutemen. I mean, just doesn't get rattled. He had a blitz coming in from the corner. I think a corner blitz by number 20, if I'm not mistaken. It just doesn't get rattled. His speed made that play. Right. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not Doug Flutie speed. Doug Flutie was fast. It's Eli Manning speed. It's that sneaky type of speed. Yeah. This one complete to Quinn, who's got some room to run. And he's finally brought down at the 40-yard line, close to another Lexington first down. Now, when boxers make a tackle right now, they got to try to rip the football out. They need a turnover. You're absolutely right. It's it's not the Michael Vick in Atlanta speed. No. It's not the early Colin Kaepernick speed. It's like out of nowhere, sneaky. It's, oh, it's there's that, a hole. It's that David long stride. It's that David Garrod, Eli Manning speed. <laughs> you know. It's that um, who was the, the the quarterback for the Chiefs? What's his name? Alex Smith. Alex Smith. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not Steve Young speed. Steve Young speed, Michael Vick, that, that's fast. It's like Tom Brady when he's got 15 yards of free space in no, front of him. No, that's slow. Tom Brady's slow. <laughs> Listen, you know, Tom Brady makes Eli Manning look like Usain Bolt. Four receivers split to each side. I'll tell you what, it's not Vanessa Claire Rose speed, I'll tell you that. Absolutely not. We gotta get back up here, because that, that's, that's when the boxers really start to The boxers need it. Yeah, she's got a good luck charm. Freilich back to pass, now running ahead. He's got some room. He's got a first down and more, heading right up the gut. Sal Freilich finally brought down at the boxer 25 yard line. And that's a killer right there. And that's that sneaky speed right there. That's running back right down the pipe. Right down Main Street speed. That's have a need for violent speed right there. 7-11 left in the fourth quarter. 28-14 to Minutemen on top. Sal Freilich breaking open a 30-yard run. I mean, he is just taking over it. He's taking over the – he's out of control. I'll tell you that. That's what he is. He's out of control. He's taking over the game. Someone needs to stop him. Unbelievable. What a player. Freilich with the fake throw out to the side gives it to Quint, who is taken down immediately. Good awareness by the boxer defense. Second and seven for the Minutemen. Freilich flanked by Quint. Two receivers split to each side. 
Freilich rolling out to the Minuteman sideline. Gets around six Brockton boxers. See ya. He goes all the way to the end zone. And See that's ya. another Minuteman touchdown. Good night, Irene. Good night, Irene. See you later. It was like any fries with that. Go home, ladies and gentlemen. Just for the record, Sal Freilich on that play got around as many boxers as Newbie Productions has won awards. Yeah, that's a lot. That, that's that, a lot. That's big that's time lot. right there. That, that's uncharted territory. Six boxers circling Freilich like sharks in the backfield. Could have brought him down for a loss. But that sneaky speed. I'll tell you what. Took him all the way to the end zone. I didn't know what to expect in this game. And I don't think anyone did. I think this is the high school football equivalent of McGregor versus Mayweather. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it was. I mean, I, I almost felt like it was like a National League, American League game. You know, you don't know what to, to expect. But um, Little interleague matchup. The yeah. kick is up. The kick is good. Some flags thrown after the play. As it stands, the score is 35 to 14. Lexington on top. Penalty against Brockton. Penalty declined. And Brockton again goes down by three touchdowns. Wow. Who saw this one coming? Apparently Lexington. <laughs> Part of the players on that field did. So again, it's week one. Let's see how Brawlton can do and uh and, 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 and recover. But let me just say this. I will, I would like to have brought the football back, if you know what I, I mean. I agree. You know, it, and I'm not sure what's going on, but I would like it to let me be frank with you. I mean, you know, school spirit does a lot. It, it, it's huge. You know, when you, when, you have, when you have teams consistently winning all the time, students feel good. You know, staff feels better. Everyone feels better. And I remember when I was in high school when the team won back-to-back -back Super Bowls. There was so much confidence coming out of Brockton. You know, there was a certain swag that you had. And, you know, I just want to see that swagger back. Brought down at the 20 was Cundiff. And Newbie, if you thought we were just going to come in here and sprinkle some pixie dust <laughs> and go undefeated and win a championship, you're wrong. Those, hey, of course, the words of Tom Herman. Long season, first game. Um, look, at, what, let's let's look at some positives. I think uh, I think they got themselves a quarterback. Um, I think the defense needs a little help. I thought they were uh, the offensive line was more physical than Brockton's defensive line. They kind of got manhandled on the line of scrimmage. Um, I I think I, I I think the offense has some some bright spots though. Honestly, a few missed tackles here and there in the first quarter kind of changed the scope of the game. Again, I'd rather get, like, if we lose to Lexington and beat BC High and Severian, I'm absolutely fine Watch with out. this loss. And Montero taken down from behind. And Montero's got to feel that pressure. He's got to have that pocket presence to understand that pressure's coming. Sean Sullivan on the sack for the Minutemen is Freilich. Looks like he's going to lose his leading receiver, Anthony Bianchi, who is still a little bit limp on the sideline. Freilich, or rather Bianchi, rather, having his left leg worked on yet again. It looks like a cramp. Montero handing off to... Wilson Pierre is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a third and about 15. Sean Sullivan on yet another loss, play for a loss for the Minutemen. 4.40 left to go in the fourth quarter, 
Lexington on top of Brockton. You just gotta start hawking up shots if you're Brockton. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got nothing to lose here. If you if you still want to try to win this game, then you gotta start hawking up shots. If you want to take this, accept the loss, and make it a teaching lesson and get some experience for the younger guys who are going to be playing next year. I'll tell you what, it's a lesson for somebody. <laughs> I mean, it's a lesson for somebody. They'll be, they'll be getting a lesson at some point. And a lot of lessons to be learned today, unfortunately. So this week in high school news, I want to get your opinions on this as a teacher. Mm -hmm. Professor Newby. The Braintree High School seniors. I don't know if you saw this in the news. I did see something like that. What, what, what the was Braintree it? High School seniors <laughs> parked sideways across the parking lot right. to block every single spot from the juniors. Braintree police came by and ticketed 65 cars and put on Facebook. That's an excellent catch. That's an excellent catch. And spinning out of bounds was number nine of the boxers. That is Paul Mitchell. But Braintree Police ticketed 65 cars all belonging to seniors at Braintree High School and put it on social media. They said, thank you for raising $975 for the town. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. I agree 110% with the police. It's a form of bullying as far as I'm concerned. You know. Um, Montero hit hard after he threw the ball, which fell incomplete intended for Cundiff. That's a uh, form of bullying and hazing. You know, so I agree 110 percent. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I I agree 100 percent. I mean, I don't agree with that at all. I mean, it's that whole, you know, I'm a senior. You're from listen, this a, a obviously a chain of. Uh, it's a hierarchy, if you will, or a chain of command, but, you know, that when you get into the realm of hazing and bullying, it's unacceptable. Now, some people are calling out the Braintree Police Department for what they say is doing the same thing to the people they ticketed. They say it's above and beyond reasonable punishment to put it on social media and embarrass them to the public. Well, yeah, I disagree. I think they got to make, make them an example. Of that's not accepted, and a ticket. If you have a ticket, you know you can easily pay the ticket and, and get away with it. You know, let's just say you're wealthy, you can get away with the ticket. It's nothing to you. But now you're embarrassed, so you're gonna think twice about it. So you're not you gonna know, learn your lesson. You, know, if you, you know, just if if you if you're a millionaire and you get a ticket, it doesn't matter. But if you're a millionaire and you're embarrassed, not that the branch we are millionaires, but you know if you can pay the ticket with no problem, but you're embarrassed, you're more worried about the embarrassment than paying the ticket. If you can't afford the ticket, then that's even stupid by you to park sideways. <laughs> but the Braintree Police Department, and I agree with this a lot, is Montero looking deep, perfect spiral, looking for number 15. Pass Thank interference you. on oh, the defense. Jeez Louise. That was clear as day. And Lexington has no right to complain. It was right in front of their face. And there's yellow laundry all over the and field. No right Flags coming from all directions. It was clear directions. as day. Go on, give us a break. We're working hot. A few Minutemen on the sidelines have decided they have a better view than the officials on it the field. It was right in front of him. He even looked behind him to try to deflect the ball. It's clear as day. Good call, ref. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you disagree with that one. I remember a play uh, Kendrick Perkins. I remember Doc Rivers told Kendrick Perkins to intentionally follow someone. He intentionally followed him. They called the foul on Perk, and Perk's hands are like, what? Me? What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? <laughs> it's like you go up to someone and you just throw a haymaker at him. What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? Come on, you're crazy. But anyway, Braintree Police have given the offending students an option to make a donation to charity instead of pay the ticket. It'll be scratched from their record. If they make a donation. How about this? How about donate that money to the junior uh, class? I like that. I like that route. Jose Montero Jr. rolling out to the far side, throwing across his body. It's going to be complete to Cundiff, who's taken out of bounds, stops the clock with 4.04 to go.
First down boxers from the Lexington 20 yard line. Montero Jr. looking to the end zone. He's got number 15. Makes the catch for a boxer touchdown. That's fade root right there. Tejon Glenn Darty, the junior wide receiver, reining that one in around a minute, man. And the boxers back down by two touchdowns, about four minutes to go. Just imagine they had just one stop. It would have been a one possession game. And that's why I, I go back to, I, I think a turning point was it was fourth and nine or something at midfield. Should have gone for it. Should have gone for it. Yeah, midfield. You know, I think you have nothing to lose there. Tobel sending this one through the uprights. The kick is up. The kick is good. 35 to 21. Box is down by two touchdowns. So don't look now. The first touchdown pass, if I'm not mistaken, for the boxers. Remind you, next Friday night, Marciano Stadium, 7 p.m. Weymouth Wildcats make the trip south to face the Brockton Boxers. The score of last year's matchup between those two teams at Weymouth, 16 to 14. No, no, 14 to 12. Not a score you typically see in high school football. Absolutely. We'll tell you how that one went. Touchdown, blocked extra point. Touchdown, blocked extra point. Both ways, both teams entered overtime tied 12-12. Rules of overtime state, every team has the opportunity to possess the ball from the 10 yard line. If they do not score a touchdown, the other team takes possession from the 10 and they have a chance to punch it in. This one loose. And it's still loose, it's a fumble, and the boxers have it. Newby, I'm disappointed. You broke the rules. The ball was loose, and you did not yell fumble. Well, it, it, it was a squibber. It wasn't a fumble, it was a squibber. Lexington had I, possession at you, one point in you there. you yell squibber? I mean, squibber! I, squibber! <laughs> squibber! So anyway, Brockton scored. I don't know what to yell. <laughs> Brockton scored on their first possession of overtime to make it 12 to six. Missed the extra point. Weymouth scored on their possession. Blocked extra point. Brockton picks up the ball, runs it 98 yards to the house for a 14 to 12 walk off win. Montero Jr. now with some opportunity and he rolls out to the near side. Jose Montero Jr. picks up a key block. Oh, what a block. And he goes out of bounds. To stop the clock with 3.46 remaining, 35 to 21. Don't look now. This is the Brockton box that I know, me rough. Don't look now. Dangerous pass right there, but I like it. Going to the middle of the field. Trying to create something. Third and one. Fourth. This is four down territory right here. Third and one for the boxers. Three forty two to go. Split receivers, two to each side. Rosen Pierre, the lone man in the backfield, he gets the carry, finds a hole as a first down, and about four additional yards. It'll be a first and 10 
from the 25 yard line for the boxers. Trips to the near side. Montero splitting up field. Looking to pass, now he'll keep it himself and he is clocked from behind. He's doing a new huddle looks, right now. Looks close to another first down. Gonna mark him just short, it'll be second at about half a yard. Split receivers to each side, Pierre Rosen, or Rosen Pierre rather, in the backfield. This pass complete to Paul Mitchell, who has a first down, and Brockton is going to stop the clock. Now they gotta punch it in right now, punch it in. First and goal for the Boxers from the seven yard line. That's big number 78. Goal line They package. need it on this play, 2.56 left to go. That's the jumbo package. Jumbo set. The give to Rosenpierre, he finds a hole and is stopped about the three yard line. Getting even just a little bit closer. I tell you what, I'm doing a bootleg right now. I'm doing a bootleg, let my quarterback bring it home for us. Split receivers. It's a mismatch here, number 88 in the slot. Offsides. Jumping offsides, great play. This same false start, I think it was an offsides. Well, the conference of the Zebras. <laughs> Someone pointing out the obvious. You can't, you can't do that. You're kidding me. I'm very good. False start against the boxer, so it goes the other way. Hey, listen, may, may not be the worst thing in the world. Now you got a little more room to work in on offense. May not be the worst thing in the world. Tell you, refreshing the at Brockton Channel Twitter feed. Follow us. Team follow back. A Doppler radar map of Hurricane Irma just popped up, and it is the size of Florida. Montero Jr. back to pass. Breaks one tackle, keeps it himself, heads towards the end zone, and he's brought down at about the three-yard line. So two minutes left. Montero Jr. sends helmet. Favoring that left leg a little bit. Montero Jr. never wanting to come out of the game two years ago against Durfee and that only helped the injury progress. Made his knee a little bit worse for wear. So one minute and 59 seconds left. 35-21, Brockton with the ball. Right on the five yard line. Crowd coming alive here at Lexington High School. Third and goal for Brockton. Montero Jr. passes complete. Trying to turn the corner and get to the end zone or out of bounds. Unable to do so was number 88. And that would be Isaiah Laguerre, Vanessa Clairvaux's baby cousin. All right. Sophomore wide receiver. Fourth and goal, Montero Jr. Able to find Tundiff and that's a touchdown for the boxers. One minute, 29 seconds left. Don't look now. Don't look now. 35-27. Doble to attempt the extra point. Or Stanley Genty, it looks like, to attempt the extra point. And it is good. So... For those of you just joining us, you've missed quite the interesting football game. 
35-28. Brockton down by a touchdown. One minute, 29 seconds to go. Buckle up, buckle up! Buckle up, baby. Get the popcorn, popcorn out! I'm gonna take this opportunity one more time to thank the cast and crew for today's festivities up at Lexington High School. Of course, the dual production, Lex Media, the best access name of the state, BCA Sports, Devin Shaw, Sam Claw, Rick Dorrington for Lex Media, Mike the Postman Simmons up top for BCA Sports, and of course, the seven-time award-winning director and producer, Emmy-nominated, but those are just stats and numbers, Newbie Ratto and myself, the Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action this wonderful Saturday afternoon from Lexington High School. Little pooch kick is gonna find its way out of bounds. So it'll be interesting to see. Lexington looks like it's gonna accept the penalty. Have a first and 10 from the 35 yard line. And pretty much do it. That's going to be a disappointing ending compared to what we just saw. Ball spotted at the 37. Well, a couple of knees wins it for Lexington, but they're lining up like they're going to go for another touchdown. I don't blame them. Go for the win. One minute, 30 seconds left. Brockton down by a touchdown. Well, they're winning, but hey, you know. The keeper by Freilich, and he finds open ground, and he's on a highway to the end zone. Sal Freilich all the way to the house with one minute and 18 seconds left. And the explanation point, the dot on the eye, the cross of the T, and Lexington's going to get out of here with a W. Ball game. Check, make, point, match. Wow. That was quick. That escalated quickly. <laughs> An entire 12-second drive for the Lexington Minutemen. Newbie, how do you let that happen after coming back from four touchdowns down? You, you draw within one with a little bit of time, a little bit of a botched onside kick. How do you let the offense of Lexington just run away with it? That's a 63-yard run for Freilich. Mad Dog, that's why I'm calling the game, not in the field. I don't know. I don't know answer your question, Matt. All I know is that this game's over. Well, a minute 17 left and a 14 point lead for the Minutemen. 42 to 28 is the score. We just saw a 63 yard touchdown run quarterback keeper for Sal Freilich. And so what seemed like it could be a Brockton comeback ends up with a two touchdown lead for the Minutemen. Brockton going to switch out return men. It's not going to be Cundiff. It's going to be Paul Mitchell. Nathaniel Derulis, rather. The return man deep for the boxers.
Little squibber. Bobbled and fell on by number 17. That is a Johnny Horn. So Brockton takes over with 115 on the clock. Lexington, a very, very potent offense as we've learned today. Three of the now six touchdowns for the Minutemen have come from Ben Quint. Bianchi with one and Sal Frelick with two. Scoring summary for the boxers, not so impressive. Rosen Pierre with one, Tijon Glendardi with one. And Montero keeping it himself, escapes a couple of tackles and he has a gain of about nine, second and one for Brockton. Number 34 is Nine yard gain, second down and one. 55 seconds remaining. Montero's pass. Dimitri Dordenville also with a touchdown for the boxers as this is Glenn Darty. Jalen Ellerby Cundiff with a few touchdowns for the boxers. Montero Jr. back to pass off the fingertips. And a little bit slow to get up is Laguerre. 32 seconds left. Clock stopped. Trips to the far side, two receivers to the near side. Brockton looking to take some shots. Montero Jr. bobbles the snap. Has some room to run, he's got a gain of five, 10. Now to the 30 yard line, running out of bounds, stopping the clock with 25 seconds left. Brockton, well they're certainly not gonna win it, but they're trying to get close, use this as a teaching moment as Jose Montero Jr. In a lot of pain, Jose Montero Jr. Favoring his left leg, taking his helmet off. And there's an injury for the boxers. So 25 seconds left, Lexington up by 14, 42 to 28 the score. It is a first and 10 for the boxers. And Jose Montero Jr. You gotta, you gotta take him out. If you're Peter Colombo, you gotta see that he's not all right. He's favoring the left leg. I think the refs just told him. The refs just told Jose Montero Jr., listen. This isn't gonna be pretty if you stay in the game. He's got his helmet off. He can almost not stand up straight. Jose Montero Jr. The injured boxer is Laguerre. And he's favoring his left leg. A couple of injuries for the Brockton boxers late in this game. 25 seconds left to go. The rest sending Laguerre off the field as the clock stopped for his injury, so. My double-A rule state, he must sit out at least one play. Be shocked if we see him again for the remainder of the 25 seconds that are left. The bigger issue for me is Jose Montero Jr. who is favoring his left leg. Of course, that is the leg he tore his ACL. He stands in the shotgun with five receivers. Three to the near side, two to the boxer sideline. Montero Jr. receiving the high snap. Ready to throw, looking long, looking deep, cutting to the far side. He's going to keep it himself, escape a tackle, and run out of bounds with 18 seconds left, a gain of about five yards. Max Stevenson on the stop. Stevenson on the stop for the Minutemen. 18 seconds remaining in the 
in the game. Lexington 42, Brockton 28. Same formation, trips to the near side. No, trips to the far side. Two receivers to the near side. Montero Jr. in the shotgun, receiving the snap. Looking over the middle, and it's going to be broken up. But flags thrown in late after the play. Four seconds lead off the clock. With the call, but it is going to go against Lexington. Lexington, Lexington eagle block in the back. Illegal block in the back for the Minutemen. So Brockton with a first. Brockton, the ball is on the Lexington 15. 10 from the 15-ish. Montero Jr. back to pass. Escapes a hit. Still on his feet. You've got to get rid of that ball. And he's brought down for a loss. Says... Brockton's going to call a timeout with four seconds left. Down two touchdowns. Four seconds remaining. Lexington 42, Brockton 28. One must wonder why. Four seconds left down two touchdowns. You've got a quarterback who's favoring his left leg. He could have just let time expire. Matero Jr. receiving the last snap, bobbles it, takes one last hit, goes down for the sack, time expires, and this one is over as Montero Jr. is still rolling around on the field. He's very slow to get up. And Montero Jr. can barely put any weight on his left leg. And that's gonna be the biggest story to come out of this game, but the final score, 42 to 28. The Lexington Minutemen come away with a win against the Brockton Boxers in what was a very, very competitive football game. Lexington dominating the first half, completely dominating. They go into halftime uh, with a score of 28-7. to They were up 21-0 at one point. Brockton getting all the way within a touchdown. They were down 35-28. to And then a 63-yard one run by senior quarterback Sal Freilich put the icing on the cake for the Minutemen and that brought us the final score of 42 to 28 for everyone here at Lex Media Brockton Community Access Sports our cameraman up top Mike the Postman Simmons our, my broadcast partner the 7 time award winning director and producer Emmy nominated Newbie Ratto I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson and we will see you next game